Hello again, friends and fans. Raptor here. Nice to have you back, and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. And if it's your first time, then you're in for a real treat because we're starting with Climb Mount Naranya. Now, I may mispronounce that one or two times, but anyway, it's a Soviet versus Japanese campaign, and I'll get the name down eventually, don't you worry. We're starting in year 1984. Difficulty very hard. It's the United States. Uh, South Korea and Japan versus the Soviet Union. 1984, after four decades of tension over the status of the Kuril Islands, diplomatic relations between the USSR and Japan have sunken to an all-time low. When a, US, uh, when a joint U.S.-Japanese fleet sails too close to the Soviet naval base of Vladivostok, this inoffensive naval exercise triggers an unexpectedly violent reaction. All right, so anyway, we'll get started with the campaign. Uh, don't forget to tell a friend, too, and thank you guys so much for your continued support. We'll go in then to the little cutscene, and then I'll see you guys on the other side. Here we go. to 1975. Japan's Soviet relationships are poisoned by the Soviet occupation of the Kuril Islands. Hence, the two countries have not been able to ratify a formal peace treaty since the end of World War II. 1979 to 1980. The Soviet Union increases troops and naval assets in the Kuril area. Japan retaliates by hardening its stance towards the USSR and increasing its military spending. 1982. Japan allows the deployment of U.S. advanced F-16 bombers on its soil. The USSR answers by transferring SS-20 missiles from Europe. 1983. The Japanese Prime Minister declares his intent to turn Japan into an unsinkable aircraft carrier. The reply from the USSR is immediate. In an era of modern technology, unsinkable aircraft carriers do not exist. November 1984, the joint U.S.-Japanese naval exercise Fleet X-85 in the Sea of Japan gets as close as 500 nautical miles from Vladivostok. The Soviet fleet is put on high alert. December 4, 1984, Fleet X ends, but Soviet Navy intelligence and the Politburo are convinced that it was just a rehearsal for a real imminent strike. The green light is given for a preemptive strike on Japan and its U.S. naval bases. December 6, 1984. When the coded message, Climb Mount Norodnaya, is transmitted to Soviet forces, several airborne and naval infantry divisions are ready to strike Japan. At dawn, the first wave of Soviet paratroopers lands on Japan, while a mechanized thrust strikes from the Kuril Islands. All right, so we're a part of that mechanized thrust, I'm assuming, as troops are landing on mainland Japan. We will be on the islands uh, which are in dispute. Looks like there was a big conflict going on, so we're right in time to uh, be a part of the battle. Comrade, our amphibious and airborne operation in Japan is a success, and Tokyo is about to fall. It is now up to you to secure our western flank. Roger that. Your aim is to protect Osaka whilst neutralizing at least three enemy airports, but be aware the Americans will launch a powerful counterattack in your sector. Colonel Broadin, carry on with the briefing. Roger that. Thank you, General, says Vladimir Putin up there. Our first wave is made up of parachute marine infantry units supported by the aircraft carrier Minsk. Our Marines can land in four sectors to the north and west, then we will have to capture the harbors and airports in order to route heavy reinforcements. The Kutznov Naval Group will support us from the south, uh, southeast. It can transport combat airplanes, offensive helicopters, and marine or helicopter-borne infantry battalions. One last thing, comrade. Beware of the enemy pocket around Gobo Airport. Their counterattacks can threaten Osaka if you are not careful. Understood. You have 16 days to achieve your goals. You control or to control three airports or even four or five if possible. Do not disappoint us. Yes, sir. All right. So here is the entirety of the naval sector or the uh, the island sector that we are 
uh, in control of. It's called uh, Climb Naradnaya there. And uh, yeah, so if I'm mispronouncing it, oh well. That's just the way it's going to be. We've got President Obama joining us here at the uh, Symbol of Japan. Now, most importantly here, the, the most important thing to look at for the map is that we've got a very good opportunity for pincer movement. We have uh, the possibility of calling in some reinforcements from Naval Sector Uniform, and we've already got some air uh, VDV and Spetsnaz groups, is that right? Yep, Spetsnaz and the VDV are up there as well. Now, to be fair, I've seen Bolt Sauce uh, start off and finish his campaign, but haven't watched all the way through to kind of not spoil it for myself, as I do want to be challenged a little bit uh, during these first few operations. Now, uh, just so you're aware as well, I probably won't be skipping any battles or anything. It's just going to be straight on through, so get ready for that. Um, so we do have... Uh, Nankoku here, which is worth 15 points. We have Totoriri, or Totorei, um, just next. I think the most important thing will be getting down the center stretch of this island, and that is extremely important because there's so many areas just to capture here, so that's where a majority of our forces will go. So even though Gobo is close to us, <clears throat> we don't necessarily want to have that uh, immediately since we already captured it, meaning we can make more progress here and then capture Gobo uh, in the next few turns. But obviously, the first turn here is going to be all about um, it's going to be all about naval landings and first moves. All right. So something important for us to do will be to make a very uh, good use of our naval troops here at Naval Sector Delta. The great thing about naval troops is that they can rush into Obama, strike, get back out under the water, and then come up to Naval Sector Gulf later on if we need them. So we do have a few units here to start with. We have a two, two units that are completely exhausted. They don't have any more moves available to them. I can't do anything, can't R&R, &R, can't do anything. Uh, at all with them. So what's going to be important is to first A, use what we have, and B, uh, make sure that our first callouts for reinforcements are uh, very good buys. Uh, we have the Kutznov here. We also have the Minsk Air Group that can provide bombers, both uh, naval and strategic bombers. Um, not strategic bombers, but just heavy, heavier bombers. Um, they do have a very good weapon system with them. VDV uh, divisions that can be deployed out of the, I believe it's out of the, uh, oh, out of um, out of the VDV sector at Bravo, the Minsk uh, Naval Brigade at or Marine Brigade out of the Minsk there, and then of course anything from Osaka, which we're somewhat limited on. All right, it's time to begin. Let's do it. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, give ourselves some support by moving our. Uh, let's see, we're going to probably want. Let's see exactly where we can strike with this aircraft. Looks like we can only do one sector at a time. So if we get close with our ship, we also have another naval landing unit available there. We can actually support ourselves from Obama there as well. We also have uh, Nunchucks, Munas, and K-27 PLPs. Again, I give everything a lovely little nickname. Uh, we probably have some, probably some bad guys right there. Um, some enemy ships and such that'll hinder us a little bit later but for now we shouldn't have to worry about them for our initial moves on the mainland are more important not to mention the naval sectors and airports but anyway let's get started with our moves just to see what we've got here uh, we have the 106 naval infantry and the 339th and they look somewhat similar um, some differences of course but mostly similar in what they're made of or what they pack. So, all right, um, we're going to go ahead and move into Naval Sector Hotel with one unit, and uh, they'll support at uh, at the next turn at Obama. We will have to call out troops regardless, so we will have to sit through one turn at least, and uh, we'll get our other um, Marine troops ready here. Now, as for the aircraft, I'd like to use those as well, but with these Marine troops ready to go, we may as well use them. Not to mention we can get a nice naval flank on the side. We won't have to parachute in directly. The Kutznov will be very useful as well. It has MiG-29s and MiG-20 or SU-27s, and uh, Nankoku is going to be extremely important for points. And there's even two sectors to capture it from, and an even a naval repair area for that uh, for that callout. So Gobo is going to have to wait for the time being. It'll have to probably wait till our next turn. But we can bring out some attack helicopters, maybe, or something. Major, I can confirm the Kutznov has arrived at the scene. It has marine or helicopter-borne troops and offensive aircraft ready to attack the enemy system from behind. Enemy system is a great band name. We should use helicopter-borne troops for inland assault. The marines could land at Nankuku with, uh, with air or ground support. Be aware the enemy has a strong presence in the area. 
All right, so exactly as I had planned. In fact, it seems like the first few moves are pretty much um, pretty much shown for you. In fact, on our main map, it kind of did point to capturing uh, several of these sectors that way in our, fir our first few moves. I'm going to be more reserved at the start and build up and then crash through. We're going to need some better tanks, and I'm assuming a little later we'll get more support as we go along. We have, um, let's see, a D DSHV regiment and a 319th helicopter. Uh, these come with, I should check, um, I probably would like some better uh, air anti-aircraft uh, weapons. But uh, anyway, we could start right at the airport. Okay, the Kutznov attack helicopter is equipped with a whole set of ro rockets and anti-tank missiles, and this is capable of securing cities with infantry. And it also uh, has missiles as well. These are outdated, of course, but they're the same points. We even have a recon uh, company, but we'll go with the uh, 319th then. All right, now we'll have to wait a turn, of course, because if we do this now, we won't have any cohesion or cohesion or corrosion, corruption, I don't know, <laughs> from those troops. But we'll get started then by uh, first ending our turn because we want our Marines to link up with the... Uh, with some other stuff. Actually, can we buy anything else for five points? I highly doubt it. I don't even think we could buy supplies. Oh, we can. BDV supply. That'll be useful. And if we have to start back here... Oh, it has to come out of the BDV. Okay, so that's... that's. It. We'll, we'll skip that for now. Alright. Let us end our turn so we can make our next moves. Computer then will... Uh, Japanese forces are then tightening around Obama. We have naval supremacy in the Sea of Japan, but South Korean squadron cast off this morning from Busan. Seems like they want to play heroes, make sure our troop transports are safe. So luckily we did move our uh, ship into a blocking position. We could even start off with a naval battle if we wanted to, though I don't... Uh, Chamsuri, Chamsuri, uh, those are mostly... Now we could actually take those, but I want to start with a naval att uh, a ground attack first. Now, we were unable to put any of these troops on R&R, &R, but we can move in now to Gobo and uh, attack them right off the start. Now, if we attack Gobo first, that's going to take one turn, which does give our tanks some time to get ready at Obama. So what we'll do is we will go into Gobo. Major, we are in sight of the first objective. The airfield is intact, but well defended. We're awaiting your orders to attack, so... We'll go ahead and uh, put that on a roger that, and we'll send in our helicopters as well. Um, you know, to be honest, too, I've thought of this campaign time and time again, and there's really no good way to do this without, you know, really having, you know, starting some trouble. You're going to take losses regardless, and uh, things are not always going to go your way. We're going to move these troops then into position, and uh, I think, actually, do we want to... We're pr yes, we'll probably have to wait a turn on that. If we disembark... I think that does take a move, so we'll wait on that as well, or we'll wait till the next turn. We have 15 extra points to spend as well, so we probably want some extra infantry out. We could even use our VDV, but uh, I feel that's a more more drastic move. We also have uh, 36 infantry and an anti-tank company here, or yes, company. Um, very light units as well. We could definitely start landing in the in the uh, in the in the further regions or the further reaches of the area. Land forces from the Minsk. Could be anti... Oh, Naval Tank Battalion, 84th, for 20. And uh, Naval Anti-Tank as well. We're going to need more infantry here, though. And unfortunately, those are with the aircraft as well. So we'll start at Gobo, and we'll finish the rest of our moves uh, as we kind of you know go on so this turn is not yet over we'll start with a battle and then do our do our turns next in fact it looks like oh, it looks like we have a little bit of a bridgehead here that's nice we can defend ourselves in a um in the towns and then uh, finish off enemy troops with helicopters which should be uh, very effective against enemy tanks since they're so light enemy has uh, almost doubled the morale we do as well and uh Ooh, we even have two elite helicopters. That's going to be a big help. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put our reinforcement point back here just in case they push us. And we'll uh, secure with uh, another unit. The BMP-2 would be a good unit to have, as we'll hide it in the forest here. And then we'll have our infantry spread around a little bit. We will need to at least have 
200 extra points for those good helicopters that we got and uh, we'll support on these sides as well in fact I'll, I'll put our defenses right here okay we do have anti-aircraft we have uh, MI24 MVPs most valuable players here we have recon as well that's going to be very useful this is going to be a very good start for us I'm feeling um, though I have confidence I still have uh, you know doubts we'll take some losses as well it is uh, inevitable and we'll have some extra reinforcements in the back and an extra recon up front alright let's get started then here we go kick 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 kicking it off yeah alright so we started the battle and this is the beginning of the campaign now it should be a good one I uh, hope you're wishing me luck as well as uh, I'll need a lot of that. I'm not the best player in the world. I'm I'm good. I'm not I'm not great. I'm not superb. It is a fantastic game to play though, regardless of your skill level. If you really want to challenge, try these campaigns. Uh, for a while, I had lost interest in the multiplayer just because it kind of just was you know as as multiplayer is. It's the same thing over and over again for a while. But it's good to step away and then come back to again and uh, there's many more campaigns on the way as well so uh, don't you worry oh we got Mirio Shiki's coming the Japanese tank names are very difficult for me to say and to remember exactly what they are oh it's a 160 point tank hello beautiful our units are ready to take those out oh BMP2's are already shooting at those uh... oh wow look at that they're already going town on our infantry but the nice thing is is instead of targeting those you should go for those 160 point units there you go is we're gonna kill some real good tanks right off the start they chewed right through our infantry the Japanese have a real crazy ability to do that I've noticed hopefully that holds them still while we hit them there we go all right so the uh, Japanese started off with a very heavy tank push. Still 160 point tank there, two of them. Oh, as well as the uh, extras in the back, so they're really starting off big. They've gotten deadly close now. It's going to be a real field day for our troops. It's not a good move for them to push in like that. Trying to kill them quick though before they finish off our units. Maybe a couple auto cannons will do us good. So I'm uh, using this MI-24 to take out the enemy recon. That, of course, will uh, blind them for a little while and make our troops harder to see. We're still going to take losses regardless, but losing the infantry is uh, not the worst of our problems. In fact, it could have been way worse. But we've got the enemy down to down to our level. We've cut them down to size now. So the Japanese wanting to make a big show at the start to show their power in the area. Uh, not working out so well for them. I'm going to call out an MI6 to help these troops reinforce themselves. And it looks like we have helicopters coming in now. Perfect time for Mini Biryusa. Many of them. Looks like these are tow helicopters next. We're going to have to back our BMPs up. Make sure they're well hidden. And we'll allow the uh, helicopters to deal with them. Those look to be just regular uh, troop transports. Not too many of them. And uh, we're going to keep our helicopters back as they approach here. Now we've got many helicopters coming. Many, many. And uh, that's going to be something we're going to want to stay away from, of course. KV-107 is just uh, a troop transport, but the, the toes could be deadly against anything coming towards them. Auto cannons from the BMPs are firing. It's going to chew through those 107s quite instantly. We're going to kind of wait until the Japanese push is finished before we really go into an attack. We want a lot of troops ready as well, so we may as well start lining them up. Not a shiki, which are 10 points. The names are misleading. Sometimes you think you're about to kill a 160 point tank and it turns out to be just a little old uh, troop transport. 
And we have some helicopters here sitting on the ground. Great time for artillery. Unfortunately, we don't have any, so that's uh, not the best. Those toes sitting up there, by the way, I'm not even going to approach with the, with the MI6 yet until they're dead. So we'll, we'll go up there and uh, take them out. Hopefully these are filled with troops. Looks like the troops just emptied and are reinforcing the building. Helicopters are really our friend here today. We've got one rocket left. Make it count. Okay, did something. We'll keep this uh, MI-24K there as it's a very good recon. We'll try to kill these troops instead. Wow. So it was really good to have the enemy come to us. Obviously the, the entirety of what they had there, tow helicopters, would have just chewed through tanks. We're going to have these infantry push up and then we're going to have uh, these infantry push up and then the ones on the left that I just made a move on. We're going to go ahead and make them attack the toes. Looks like there's more. We're going to just go ahead and push the attack. Not waste any more time. I will tell these troops to go back and cover though. We got 40 point rocket helicopters. We'll need at least two of those. The MI-24K has the same Gatling cannon on it as the MI-24BP, so it can defend itself no problem. I do need to push the enemy out of this area completely, though. We can't keep wasting time like this on killing enemy troops that are just coming at us. The enemy, the, Jap uh, the Japanese are doing this to delay us, but we need to start finding commands and pushing them out of this area. It's the only way we're going to have success. Um, we have to totally destroy them. Literally. We do have uh, Biriusas with us now, but the Toes are very good counters to that. KV-107 staying away, but uh, BMP-2 is there. We'll defend that MI-26, uh, MI rather. We'll move it up here now so we can resupply. Hopefully he comes over for a kill. Okay, with those tow helicopters out of the way on our left, we are going to have the uh, noose loosened a little bit. Looks like more troop transport helicopters are coming up. Hopefully without the troops. KV-107 coming up behind. We'll go ahead and take him down. And the BMP-2s are finally arriving. Infantry is pushing up. We'll have the uh, VIPs move back. Moving these uh, troops forward more for makeshift recon. Oh, and they were carrying troops. That's fantastic. Hopefully he's panicked. Missile away, and it's a miss. Okay. Fantastic. So let's uh, move our helicopters back. Motor Strelicky insta kill by the 106. Damn. Infantry shouldn't be so easy to kill like that. My wish. Wow, look at that. Alright, that's good. Hopefully we can capture those supplies up there. We'll move forward with our BMP-2s as well. Alright, we can't let those 107s come around the flank like that. We'll keep an eye on them with our... Uh, Okay, so the Renzu 106s are going to be a real big pain in the ass, it seems, this round. They're very good infantry killers. And my prediction is that they'll have insta ack which basically means they're going to target fire and kill everything in half a second. Which is not good for us. Motor Streliki is making its way closer. We probably found a command. Nope. My sixes are out already. Go ahead and have these BMPs come up. Crazy, crazy cool infantry transports for the Japanese. They're really able to do some good work there. 
Hopefully our BMP2s are cooler though. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's such a cool noise. And my 24Vs are ready to cut anything off coming out. And we'll continue to bring out bigger helicopter now since we've got a lot more to supply. KV 107s got cocky and came out. They should have hid. Could have been a possibly decent flank for them as well. We're going to look for a command now with this group of Motor Streliki. Oh, yep, and the 10 106s are out. BMP 2s are getting killed, but again, we gotta we gotta start moving. So I'm going to park it about here. Good luck killing BMP2s. Those 160s, I can't believe they actually are, are surviving against that amount of missiles. Now that's the thing about these Japanese is that they're able to almost target everything at once um, and it, it does make it tough to get past them but we really do need to have this first sector done. Infantry is expendable unfortunately. BMP2s are hitting them in the side. It's giving them a good target to hit. And it still leaves our motor streliki. The Japanese have heavy stuff and a lot of little stuff. Makes it uh, more difficult. Yeah, see, 106 is like that. I wish they would just get instantly panicked and kind of fall off the map. That's a little frustrating um, to lose that number of BMP2s, but really I need to uh, kind of stop them from pushing up so close like that. They keep pushing through time and time again, and uh, we got stopped by some heavy tanks there. Now uh, we'll sneak in there. Luckily we have some decent positions now, but... Taking losses in it is inevitable, and this is a very hard campaign, so it's going to be very hard, as you can imagine. So more 160 point tanks, that'll take 10 ATGMs to kill. Bad we don't have bombers today. Alright, MI-26, MI-24V should land. Wow, look at that. Came right up behind. Sneaky. Yeah, so look at look at the amount of uh, heavy tanks and stuff they have. It's just incredible. Computers uh, feeling the pain here with the um, the amount of points that they're losing. They they did they did a very good flank there. Very unexpected. There's not much uh, we can do in terms of flank. We could go all the way up here, but we're going to run out of fuel and probably get trapped. I'm not necessarily trusting that. I just want to push through and find a command and move on to the next area. We really need a, a bomber to deal with this kind of cluster. We're getting too close again. But the amount, I mean, the, the fact that the Japanese can just kind of blob like that and not be, they're not, they're really not dying to that amount of missiles. We do own 70% of the points needed to win, but uh, they have some just amazingly resilient units. I mean, 
look at all the helicopters we have just to kill cheap 10-point transports. Uh, South Korean units? No. Alright, so we'll set up security again for our next command. So much for me trying to be smart. Oh, there we go. Speaking of commands, good. Now we'll just move on to the next one. We'll let them hit our BMP2s and everything else. Six destroyed. Wow, what an what an amazing battle! This uh, capturing of this airport will give us a lot more options too. So I mean, it's this is not going to be easy. Again, if we brought tanks, they had tows. If we brought infantry, they had a hundred million infantry. The options here are endless, but so is the amount of ways for the Japanese to punish you. We have about three hundred points left to get. Again, another ridiculous amount of uh, units to kill in order to achieve that. We're going to just blob down and find a uh, enemy command. There it is. Now they should be stunned beyond belief here. I'm just trying to go for the command and get out of the way. If this was multiplayer, that thing would have been dead by now. Alright, well, we'll move on to a new target. The uh, it's not even uh, deemed it necessary to move. That's how much of a non-threat that it thinks I am. That's pretty bad. Bad for us. There we go, 150 point unit destroyed. And hopefully this is the final unit here. Michibishi CV. Now what's frustrating about that is we could have destroyed everything, but we're unable to because of the um, because of the uh, fact that we weren't able to get to that last command in time. We'll probably be fighting there again against helicopters. Wow, the amount of tanks they had, that was incredible. All right, that is it for the first episode. I could have done a lot better there with those BMP-2s, you know, the infantry deployment, uh, but really, I cannot believe they had a, a solution for everything. They had a solution for infantry, they had tows, I mean, they had a ton of infantry, heavy tanks, and tows. Luckily, they didn't have bombers or anything. That's something that maybe could have benefited us there from the uh, Kutznov. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, these are just basically anti- um, anti-ship and anti-aircraft. Well, they're they're both anti-ships, so really, it's not. It wouldn't have benefited us uh, to bring in the aircraft. Only the Minsk is able to call in bombers, and we would have had to move down here. As you can see, we can only move a few sectors uh, with our aircraft, so it really it wouldn't have not benefited that situation at all. So anyway, Gobo will fall next, and luckily we didn't send any heavy tanks over. Uh, we're we're right on the main line, ready to go. So we will. Um, we will figure out what we're going to do next, I suppose. Uh, we do have, um, now where are these called out again? Ah, yes, the guards. Okay, so we have anti-tank vehicles. The Japanese will have some better tanks here. These uh, are some decent tanks here. The, um, the uh, 40 and 35 point tanks don't seem like much, but they're definitely deadly. Uh, well, as you see, the Japanese, uh, not to be underestimated. I wish I would have gotten that total victory, but just not today. We'll get it eventually. All right, so also, I guess the Kutsnov does have some extra units that I could have called out, but they were all 20 points, so I couldn't have afforded them, actually. So, all right, well, that's it for now. Uh, we will go ahead and, uh, well, I guess we'll save up our points for some bigger buys in the future. And speaking of buy, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Keep your password and pimp hand strong and bring that cornucopia pain, and thank you so much for the support. Bye.